Hey guys, so first of all, YouTube, you can calm down, this was not sponsored, I was not compensated anyway, nothing except for the parts covered by warranty was free at all, so there you go. So I got a uh, Elegoo Mars, and I had an issue with it, and um, I wrote to the Elegoo customer service to let them know what was going on, and they are hands down the most polite and accommodating customer service I've ever dealt with. So if you have a problem with your machine, just you know politely let them know. Include a video or a picture of whatever the issue is, because they're going to ask for it anyway, and uh, they'll get you sorted out. So yeah, definitely, definitely good customer service right there. So what happened was, yes, I put a handle on my machine. What happened was this screw right here was completely jacked up and uh, I couldn't get the thing in or out. I didn't realize that that was a problem because you know, I looked it up everything said, oh yeah, you got to crank down on it super hard. They didn't mean that the whole thread path should be super hard. But anyway, this screw is messed up so I wasn't able to get the uh, build plate here level and that caused a catastrophic failure with my machine which broke through the FEP film, if you can see that or not. And it broke the screen there so after letting them know about it they sent me a new screen and two new things of film so now let's go over and uh, figure out how to change this stuff out this is not really a tutorial because I've never done it before but hey let's uh, see if I can get it right as far as the build plate goes they did tell me that there is a baggie with extra screws they send you a whole bunch of stuff when you buy one of these machines it's pretty good so yeah, we'll switch out the screw and see if that works. If it doesn't fix it, then I'll just buy a new build plate. All right, so let's see about this screw here. Since I've done it a few times, it actually has gotten looser, but it's still, it's like really gritty and terrible. Let's see here. So the threads are okay, but there's definitely some debris in there. It, it um, Definitely chewed it up a little bit. The screw looks okay, but just looking at it doesn't really tell you much. You need a thread gauge. I don't have one for these screws. So we'll just try a new screw and see what that does. These Allen keys they send with the thing have a cool little ball in that just kind of like clips on there. It's really, really handy. Yeah, that's, uh, you can probably see that. It's no no effort at all to just, so yeah, that, uh, that was definitely the problem. This screw here is uh, garbage. So we'll throw this one away, and this should have uh, fixed the issue with the plate. As for the machine itself, to change out the screen, what we need to do is undo the screws on the side of the front panel here. Depending on the motherboard type, Either the connector will be, I think, on this side, or it'll be somewhere deep inside the machine, which I really hope it's not. They also included a little neat little uh, Allen key screwdriver thing. All right, so let's see where the uh, ribbon connector goes to on here. It's a pretty generous amount of ribbon on that front um, screen, so that's helpful. And it does look like it's right there for the screen here so let's see if the screen they sent me has any instructions in it <laughs> nope but it does have this let's go to this video to watch how to do it so I'm gonna do that real quick okay that was a that was a really fast video so if you're watching those videos for instructions then you're gonna need to pause it at certain spots but anyway I've got the third one that they showed in their video so yeah, I just gotta unplug this little thing, pull the screen out, put the new one in, plug it in. Really simple. And I'm wearing gloves so that I don't end up touching this or that or anything. So this screen does have protective film on both sides of it, just for idiots like me who touch things. So uh, yeah, make sure you take that off of the underside before you put it down.
It does come with extra tape strips for around the thing, but this is so new I don't need them. It does not come with the one for the motherboard thing though, so I'm just going to take this old one. Alright, now that it is up and running. Also, I don't know if this is a thing of this printer or if it's just my machine or what. Maybe Elegoo could answer me. But I turn it on, it sometimes takes like a minute to actually turn on. I don't know what's happening there. Anyway, now that it's up and running, let's go ahead and see if the screen does the uh, exposure thing like it's supposed to. Um, it should be fine, but you know, let's go ahead and check. I did leave the, um, the stuff on it, so, you know, dust, whatever in this room. Can't see the buttons. see what it does. Seems to be working. Alright, so uh, there we go, I got the screen changed. It is a little fiddly getting into this, this thing that it sits in, but uh, that's how you change out the screen. So let's just go ahead and do the film on this thing here. Let's turn this off right now. So they also have a video on uh, changing out this film here, and it totally makes me understand why you can get disposable tanks. I'm not looking forward to this. As far as the two films here that they sent me, this is actually part of the thing where you can get on their Facebook and fill out a survey or whatever, and they'll send you two films when you buy the machine. So yeah, definitely do that. Two free films, why not? Alright, so that is what is in there. It actually has instructions on it, if you don't feel like watching the video. It's pretty self-explanatory, pull out all the screws, put the film on, and put the screws back. You're supposed to put a sponge in between the film and the bottom, so it's got spacing, you'll see. So let's go ahead and take these apart. This also, the machine also does come with the uh, little wrench for this thing. In the future though, I'll probably just buy disposable trays because I don't ever want to do this again. If you just go through and loosen them all first, then you can use the uh, ball end of it to do this pretty quickly. You might consider using an electric screwdriver, but I absolutely don't use a drill. That would be way too much torque. Alright, so this just separates from the tray there. And you can and take all these out, I think. And let's see, we got smaller screws on the other side. And you can see this has a little bit of flex to it. It's supposed to be able to flex. That's why you put a sponge under here, or actually under here, while you're putting the uh, other screws in when you put the new film in. So let's go ahead and bust these ones out. It is a smaller Allen wrench. It's not this one. It's the wrench that goes to the case. That's a whole lot of screws, guys. Okay, now we can go ahead and separate this thing, making sure we don't accidentally flip any parts over, that way nothing gets all screwy. Take the old film off of here. Now I did clean this really really well with alcohol, but there's probably some leftover gunk on here, so I'm definitely going to have to wash my hands afterwards. You might want to do this with gloves on. So there's your old film. Alright, so the uh, instructions on here don't mention the whole sponge thing, but they do show that on their video. So I will actually use a bit of sponge in the middle to keep it from getting too tight, as they say in here, make sure it's not too tight. And that'll help keep the uh, sponge off of the, or the screen off of the dirty surface. Sponge looks like a lot of space. That, that might be too much space. I think that's too much space. Let's just go ahead and trim this sponge down first. I showed a whole sponge in the video, but that looks that looks like a lot of space. We'll just trim this thing in half. And we'll use the thicker half. There we go. Alright, so you don't have to be too exact with the placement of this film. There's extra hanging off the edge on purpose. It gives you room to work. And then you just jam the screw straight through it somehow.
Definitely easier said than done. Alright. That's not too bad. Go around, do the uh, corners first, and then we'll do the sides. Before we put any more screws in, we can go ahead and check it. Like I said, make sure it's not too tight. It's definitely got some flex to it. I don't. I hope that's not too much. Let's see once the other screws go in. Just double checking the instructions. They do not say anything about doing a offset pattern or anything like you do with the lug nuts on your car. So I'm gonna assume I can just go around in a circle, or maybe offset one side than the other or something like that. To get these things through the film, all you got to do is push down while you're screwing it in. You can actually hear and feel it go through. It makes like a odd crunch sort of sensation and sound. Now I'll go through and just check these, make sure I didn't leave any of them a little too loose. At that one. And that one. It's definitely worth double checking just to make sure you didn't uh, leave anything too loose. You don't want to have to do this again. Is that too tight? No, it's got a lot of room. Maybe too much, actually. I don't know. This film also seems a lot thicker than the, uh, stuff that came off of it. I wonder if I screwed up. Instructions don't say anything about separating a uh, like a layer of stuff or whatever. But this is it's got we can see this looks like a like a vacuum seal going on right here. This seems really really thick compared to what I took off of here. I don't know if I messed something up. Might have. Oh yeah, I totally screwed up. So, um, I finally got this to separate here. You can see that there are two protective sheets over the film itself. This is the film in the middle. Uh, the instructions didn't mention that, and I'm just stupid, so I'm not blaming Elliot. That's my fault. So now i got to take these screws out, peel these protective doohickeys off, and put the uh, film back where it goes. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that looked a little bit too opaque there. Also, because my uh, left hand is likely going to be touching this once the, the uh, protective film is off of it, I'm going to go ahead and put a glove on so that I don't smear grease and gunk all over. You know, hands are dirty. So here's the peely thing on the end. One of these ends. It's there, it's just very difficult to see, and I'm stupid. So, there you go. Nice and clear. You can't even see it unless the light hits it. No crunching sensation, so I'm going to guess I'm not making new holes, which is good. So, let's go ahead and put the rest of these screws back in. So now before we put it back into this thing, we've got to trim this excess off the side. Best way to do that is of course with a super sharp razor blade. There we go, got all the uh, stuff trimmed off. It's super, super staticky. And this thing goes in if you can see that there's holes on the, of course you can see there's holes. If you can see these holes have a uh, 
little divot on one side and they're flat on the other side. And of course, if you remember when we took it out, the uh, screw ends were up, not the screw heads. So just make sure you get it back in here the correct direction. Oh, I see. Okay, because of the way this frame works, okay, so this was never explained to me. Now it makes more sense to me. So the way, because of the way this frame works, there's a huge divot in here. There's massive space in between the top edge of the thing and the bottom of this thing. I think that space might actually be more than this right here. So what happens is you drop this thing into this thing, and this ridge right here pushes up against the film and pulls it tight. Just like that. You can see it tightened it up or not, but it definitely did. And now we can go ahead and put these in. They are going to have to punch through the plastic as well. Yeah, don't uh, don't slip and accidentally poke a hole in your film. Ooh, that'd be bad. All right, guys at Elagoo, how's this supposed to work? All right, so no amount of gentle spinning is going to get it to go through here, and if you push too hard, it pops up. Don't want that to happen. So I think what I'm going to do, this is not what the instructions say to do, but it's what I'm doing. I'm using a very, very sharp gentle pick. You could use a needle. I'm just going to poke a very small hole right in the center of each of these screw holes so that the screw can get it started. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to get those in there without this thing jumping around on me. Yeah, we'll get these in here. Let's do the edges first, because there's only one on each edge. And that should hold the rest of it down. And one. Come on. Alright, let's get both of those tight. If you were worried about the hole poking, you could just do the two ends. And then once those were tight, you wouldn't have to worry about whole thing jumping around on you and you'd be able to put enough pressure to actually ram the screw through it that seems a little a little bit heavy-handed to me How far down does that go these were these were real tight when I took it off so imagine they need to be that way when it's going back down definitely a there's a bow in it now it's bowed up so I think I'm gonna loosen these just to where the threads are hanging on put all of them in and get them equally tight I think if I go too tight right now I'm gonna mess something up all right now that I have those Six in there. Probably go ahead and tighten them up and get those last four. Man, that goes down so far. Okay, yeah, these are supposed to bottom out. It just feels crazy like you're gonna break something. Alright, and with those all bottomed out, I can just drop in the last four. Should be ready to level and print. And just like with the other side of it, go through and make sure that everything's good and tight. Don't over tighten it. You don't want to strip anything, but you don't want anything loose because this has quite a lot of force being applied to it when the build plates coming up trying to separate from the film. Alright, so now you can see what I was talking about here. The edge of this thing, let's see if I can angle this to the camera. So yeah, the edge of this thing is actually, the, like the trench that this sits in, is deeper than this top edge. So it gets pulled around this, this edge, makes that really tight. Like, I don't know if that's too tight now, that might be. So that's why you're supposed to leave space. The screen is definitely dirty. 
This is interesting. I don't know if you can see this or not. I get a glare on it. So just for me poking at it right then, to show that it's really tight, you see those dents I made in it? I didn't really hit it that hard. I just kind of tapped it. So hopefully that's not so tight that it breaks. We'll find out. But this needs to be cleaned. And then I uh, need to take the protective coating off the screen. And we can level it. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and level it. Loosen these screws. Go ahead and send it all the way down. Just because I can be a bit of a dumb dumb sometimes, I'm checking the manual here. It says to uh, hold it down and fasten screw number one, that's the front, then screw number two. First, though, let me just try and get a peek here, make sure that this is actually straight on the machine, not twisted, because it will twist as well. Hold it down, fasten screw number one. Okay, that's going to take more turns than that. A little gritty at the end there, but I think it's alright. And then fasten screw number two. See why they have the uh, the ball in that you can do it at an angle. Those are both good and tight. Definitely not going to be causing troubles. Bring that back up. I forget how many times it says to hit the button. Press 10 millimeter 10 times. There we go. Now it's at the top. So we get rid of this. This has been cleaned. I'll just go ahead and slide that in place. Tighten down the thingamajigs. Put your uh, USB with your files on it in the back of it here. More on that in a second. Okay, we're going to have this print in just a second if you want to watch that montage. Uh, if you're wondering my review on this machine, if you're super broke like I am, uh, and you can't afford the Mars Pro or, or the Saturn or something, then uh, yeah, definitely get the Mars. This is a great machine. Its print quality is just, I mean, that is phenomenal. That's crazy. Like the uh, antenna on this dude, I'm pretty sure it's actually smaller than a support, and it printed that. So, yeah, the quality is just incredible. There are a couple things about this I don't like. One thing I don't like is this. I know you fixed it on your newer machines, but if you can sell some kind of upgrade to where I can take these screws out and replace this for something that will hold the stick on the front, that I would, I would pay for it. Uh, but for now, I mean, there's that. The other thing I would like to see, um, which would have stopped the failure I had, is if there's a sensor on the Z to where it comes down, and if it hits too much resistance coming down, it'll just stop, cancel the print, and return to the top. I don't know if the Pro or the Saturn have that. Uh, they might. I don't have those machines, so I don't, I don't know. But um, if that's not a feature you guys have, then definitely think about putting that on there. I, I don't know how hard that would be. Uh, or what the added cost would be, but personally having experienced a failure from it coming down too far and smashing into the thing, I would pay whatever the added cost is to have that feature. So as far as is this machine worth the 190 bucks or something like that that it is right now? Definitely, absolutely. I mean, you know, Christmas is coming, so definitely get this for somebody if they're looking for a printer. Um, if you can afford to get the Pro or the Saturn, go with that. But if you can't, there's nothing wrong with this machine. It's just two very minor gripes. I mean, people have been dealing with the no sensor forever, and the thing on the back can be solved with a USB extension, so not a problem, really. Again, a huge thank you to Elegoo. Your customer service team is absolutely amazing. This machine is amazing. And thanks to everybody who watched this long. Enjoy the uh, printing montage.